वेलकम बैक गैस टुडे अनदर फार्मैट लेसन सो आई एल ट्राइड मेक इट शॉर्ट वन बिकॉज़ द लास्ट वन वेंट ऑन फॉर 20 मिनट्स और सो सो माओ इनहिबिटर्स सो मोनो अमाइन ऑक्सीडेज इनहिबिटर्स मोनो अमाइन ऑक्सीडेज इनहिबिटर्स uh basically they are involved with synthesis of uh, particular neurotransmitters in particular regions so they are again classified into uh, they have two isoenzymes it can be your biochem question or it can be your pharma question so isoenzymes we have type a and type b now type a is mainly responsible for synthesis of norepinephrine noradrenaline serotonin and tyramine okay both of them are involved in dopamine synthesis and b is related with phenyl ethyl amine okay uh, the drugs which we used to inhibit them i'll just tell you right now instead of going in a long structure uh, they are chlorgilin ah, they are weird names moclobemide and selegilin yeah we have selegilin for b chlorgilin and moclobemide for a weird names bear with me now distribution so we know about a and b but uh, again there are non selective drugs and then there are selective drugs so the a receptors are uh, located in the intestine the placenta okay and adrenergic nerve endings now the b is located basically in platelets and brain brain adrenergic nerve endings now why did i mark those things out uh we oh yeah, have one more thing a and b both are located in the liver so three things to mark out why did i mark this thing out uh you might be wondering why i'm talking about monoamine oxidase inhibitors now basically we are here talking about the depression treatment okay so monoamine oxidase inhibitors are used as antidepressants yeah uh so now uh, we're talking about antidepressants so you have adrenergic nerve endings we have brain so makes sense now why liver uh, again i'll tell you about that so first how did we get to know that antidepressants they were antidepressants so you know when uh, tuberculosis treatment was started with isoniazid and all those what they observed was isoniazid elevated the mood so i gave isoniazid to a tuberculosis patient along with the treatment the, it seemed that the person's mood was elevated okay he was happier so what they thought was okay maybe it's having an antidepressant effect but the only problem with isoniazid is it's hepatotoxic okay now given that psychiatric illnesses need chronic treatment uh, we can't have something that's very very toxic so what we did was we developed you know a safer drug called phenazine yeah we developed this so isoniazid was initially you know accidentally discovered and they said that yeah it has mood elevation properties so we discovered a less a uh, toxic drug now why did i mark out liver so basically if there is any damage to the liver these things are not going to be properly functioning okay so again we have hepatotoxicity we don't want that occurring there now we have a few things so we have non selective okay mm, mao inhibitors okay now what they do is they elevate mood of course now if you continue to give them it will lead to a little more elevated mood leading to hypomania and it will lead to a little more elevated mood <laughs> leading to mania so that was one of the problems and one of the other problems was these things okay don't act directly they act via metabolites okay the drugs act via metabolites and these metabolites irreversibly bind with the receptors now since they irreversibly bind even after you stop the treatment okay the effects are still going to last for 2 to 3 weeks 
That's the main problem. Now, if the person goes from elevated mood to hypomania to mania, this is going to be the problem. You're going to have to deal with the maniac patient for two to three weeks, which is not a good. So these drugs, since they stay in the system, I, even after administering, they are called hit and run drugs. Not a good thing, right? Hit and run drugs. Now, uh, so we have to look at a few side effects of this. So it comes in the interaction part. So maybe you all are aware of the cheese reaction. Basically what happens when you give non-selective uh, inhibitors and we saw that A is present in the intestine and the person after getting his MAO inhibited, okay, you give him something, some food which is rich in tyramine. So we have examples. So when you give these things, you're supposed to tell the person to avoid a few things. So he has to avoid milk and products alcohol and meat so meat you know has proteins proteins has tyramine so when you administer these things there's a problem that the tyramine will not be mono amino oxidized yeah and that will enter your systemic circulation and from systemic circulation it go it will go to nerve endings okay after reaching nerve endings what it's going to do is it's going to displace the neurotransmitters which are present there basically those will be adrenergic which will lead to hypertensive crisis so we want to avoid any hypertensive hypertensive crisis where the patient is taking treatment and is far away from the hospital um, so what we do is we give them a dietary advice while giving them that's an important thing now why does this matter why is hypertensive crisis even an important thing because that can lead to cerebrovascular hemorrhage cerebrovascular hemorrhage cerebrovascular events accidents whatever you call it it's going to lead to that so we don't want that now again if the person is receiving dopamine okay or any dopamine substitute like levodopa it's a bad idea again you have hypertension because of increased t half of and noradrenaline, dopamine and noradrenaline. So, if you give amino oxidases, this thing is not going to be degraded. You have increased half life of this and this. Again, that's going to lead to hypertension. So, if the person is receiving Parkinsonism treatment, go for other antidepressants, tricyclics, and all those. Just you know, try to avoid it. And they have one more. If the person is on anti-Parkinsonism anticholinergics. Okay, so basically, if you're using anticholinergics to treat this, then there will be symptoms of atropine poisoning. So, again, one thing to again avoid. So, what we did was instead of having irreversible things which you can't contract immediately, we built reversible ones. Okay, reversible inhibitors. Uh, basically, we look at MAVO A. So, they are called REM, reversible inhibitors of MAO A. Uh, so, important one, moclobemide, which has a short duration of one to two days, and uh, it tyramine can, okay, displace moclobemide. So, if this is blocking MAOA and is attached to moclobemide okay we'll just call it drug okay if this is the situation then when you administer tyramine okay tyramine what will it will do is it will just displace the drug so drug is no longer here drug becomes free tyramine is attached tyramine gets metabolized so in such cases you don't have to worry about diet restriction okay any diet can be followed if you give a reversible one and uh, their efficiency okay of rima is greater than tcm tricyclic antidepressants in certain 
conditions okay so basically i think this much will be as important as it can get uh, I, there are still other things which we could discuss like uh, pharmacokinetics and uh, adverse effects and all those but i think this will be sufficient thank you guys for watching i'll see you guys in the next video thank you for being a wonderful audience bye